Lord God this morning, uh, uh, go with me to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and verse 12 to 13, and then we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. And we're reading this morning coming from the New Living Translation, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And while you're getting that, I certainly do appreciate, again, the continuous uh, blessings that the praise team have come together, and Brother Andrew and Jordan and the voices that come before us each and every week now. Thank you so much Amen. for your Amen. diligent Amen. service Amen. to the Lord. I really do appreciate it. It, it, it. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. <laughs> I really do appreciate it. Thank you so, so very much. So very much. First Corinthians chapter 10. And getting at verse 12, the word of God reads, if you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. Y'all see that? Yes. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, y'all see this, he will show you a way out so that you can endure it. He says, Paul says, when you are tempted, when you are tested, he will show you a way out so that you can endure it. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and... Verse 9, again from the New Living Translation. Amen. If you don't have your Bibles with you, I think they have it up there on the monitors for you. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. And the Word of God reads, Each time he said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. I just want to talk to you for a moment. You can handle this. You can handle this. Father, we thank you for allowing us the time to come and to share with your people. For the second watch of the day, oh God, I pray for your strength and your power. In the name of Jesus, hold me up right now, Holy Spirit, for I need you in the name of Jesus. Bless now, O oh God, this your servant. Use my mouth, O oh Father, to speak only your words that will bring light to your people in the name of Jesus. Shower down on us in the name of Jesus through your spoken word. It is in Jesus' name I do pray with thanksgiving and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. You might be seated in the presence of the Lord. You can, you can handle this. Uh, I, I remember uh, when I was in school uh, that uh, I wasn't too fond of taking tests. I don't know how many people are, but I, I remember when Isaiah was a youngster. And it amazes me, and it amazed me and my wife both, how our other children had to study. But well, for some reason, Isaiah, I'm like, where are your books? Mm -hmm. Seemed like for some reason this boy always had good grades and appears like he never <coughs> had to study a day in his life. Amen. Go ahead, man. But although he didn't have to seemingly study, he was always subjected to taking a test. Y'all stay with me. 
every one of us, when you remember when you were in school, how you had your certain courses or your certain lessons or subjects, if you will, and during a certain period of time, you, the teacher would go over certain things and they would let you know uh, without uncertainty that certain items were going to be on the test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember having one teacher that uh, you had to pay close attention, Wendy, because they weren't going to tell you exactly what was going to be on the test. But what they had, what they did, Juan, was that every time they would say something and do, that was an indication mm -hmm. that that particular thing was going to be on the test. And, and Janae, tests are really there to help us and to, to, to see where we are in certain areas. See how much we've learned, how much we have obtained in our learning. And there's one thing I noticed about my teachers when they gave a test. Watch this. Because Sam, that they didn't leave the room. Hmm. Some people, some people, you, you, you have a day, you ever have a teacher that gave how out the test papers and then left out? You do? Yeah. yeah, all the time. <laughs> but how many people cheat? Mm -hmm. ah, once that teacher leave the room. See, see, you gotta understand, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to make this real practical for you. See, you gotta understand something that when you and I, beloved, go through tests in life, understand that God has already, he's already, watch this, during the course of your life, a course of life, he has given you certain things, certain subjects, if you will, all right, certain, certain things that you should have learned to a certain point in your life. Talk to me, somebody. And then after a while, there's a test going to come. But watch you. He's not going to just give you the test and walk out. No, 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 no. Whatever, he's, he's going to give you the test and he's going to stay right there in the room with you. Not for the simple fact that you might cheat because you can't cheat on a godly test, but for the simple fact that when you come up against a rough question or, or something that you don't understand, that the teacher is still right there to answer your question. Yes. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. All right. <laughs> so you can handle this, whatever it is that you're going through. All of us in this life, we're going to go through some tests. Yes. Marcel, we're going to go through some tests. Now understand, there's a difference between a test uh, that the Lord allows you to go through and something that you're dealing with because of your hard-headedness. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. See, because sometimes the Lord will allow things to come your way just to test your faith and see where your walk is with him. Mm -hmm. And have you ever, whew, Lady Linda, have you ever took a test and failed a test? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm all of y'all real straight A students, I know. <laughs> have you, can I, anybody have to go to sun, summer school? Night Amen. School. Thank you for being honest. Night school. Amen. I, 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 had, I had to go to summer school. Why? Because I didn't get the lessons during regular school. <laughs> but there's, ooh, but there's always a summer school is to give you a second chance mm -hmm. to catch up to where you should have been. That's right. I'm, I'm just going to tell the story. This ain't got nothing to do with the sermon. But I, I remember I was in 11th grade and I had to go to summer school. Mm. I always told y'all about my mama and y'all think I'm kidding. <laughs> that was a rough summer. <laughs> that was a rough summer. But she said, she said, she said, listen, after, after I got my butt to her, <laughs> y'all do know that that took place. <laughs> Well, she said, you're going to wait till 11th grade. She said, that's all right. That's all right. You better bring me that diploma come next year. Amen. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. See, see, God is going to, okay, you've gotten to this point. You're about to graduate. And here it is. You want to mess up now? No, but there's some still more tests in life that you and I have to take. So, so I, I just want to help you this morning. I want to help you this morning. Amen. I want to give you five uh, truths, if you will. That you and I must embrace five truths that, that I want you to embrace to let you know 
that you can handle whatever it is that you're going through. Can I help you this morning? The first uh, truth I want you to know, and the Bible says that no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. In other words, beloved, watch this. You are not alone. You are not the first person to go through what you're experiencing, and guess what? You certainly won't be the last one. All of us, each and every one of us in here, are going to go through some testing periods in our life. That's right. And it, 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 happens, it happens to every one of us. So, so listen, don't, don't feel like you've been singled out. I, I'm, I, how come sister so-and-so ain't going? I'm always going through a test. I'm always, the Lord always tells me, that's because you ain't got the lesson right the first time. <laughs> God is not singling you out, but again, then again, he is. Because, watch this. Those tests come to help to mature you in your faith walk. And if you and I, listen, if you are not, I are never tested in our faith, then we think we could just go on and do whatever we can do or want to do. But the Lord said, you and I, we're going to have to go through some tests. We're going to have to go through some tests. And, and you got to understand, listen, your situation, although uh, it may be unique to you, but at the core of it, the net. It's just like many others that have experienced it. Amen. All right? And scripture, scripture was written, understand, scripture was written to people who were in many ways just like you and I. They experienced pains just like you and I. Amen. They had bad marriages and problems just like you and I. They had church problems just like you and I. They struggled. With, 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 with things in life. They struggle with children. They struggle with addictions. They, all this stuff, you look in the scriptures, all of these things took place before. So you and I aren't the only ones to go through. They struggled with sin issues. Mm -hmm. You and I aren't the only ones that go through these things. But understand something, beloved. There is a solution. God has given us a solution, and the solution is his word. And if we take his word and apply it to our lives, understand something, beloved, that you and I can make it through. Amen. You can get through this if you take his word and apply it. Get, watch this. We, and I just, I just got finished talking about eating. Right? Tanya, watch this. It's important. It's important. None of us in here will purposely, other than if you're fasting, go without eating. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick on uh, Dacia right here. A uh, couple weeks ago, uh, I was with my family, and we, we went to a, a, a kitty party. Went to a kitty party. And I don't know uh, what uh, they had been doing before then, but Tay and Deja were hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and they let it be known that they were hungry. We got to the kitty party. And, and they had pizza. <laughs> Tay. Say, want some pizza? Now, first of all, when you're hungry, you ain't got no business being picky. <laughs> you say, would y'all like some pizza? Tay said, what kind? <laughs> they grow, you said you were hungry. You better eat that pizza. <laughs> they say, would you like a juice? What flavor? Amen. That's right. I'm looking at me. Shut up. Yeah. You're right. But there was something, I don't know. Deja, Deja had said something. Deja said, I'm so hungry. You said, I don't know. Like she, I mean, she was, she was sick to the point. Look, I don't care what y'all do. Y'all got to feed me. <laughs> I am like, I mean, did she not eat all day? And then had been gone all day. But she was, she didn't, she didn't make no qualms about her intake. Look, we hungry. And we pulled into one restaurant. They was ready. Matter of fact, the car hadn't even stopped. I thought I'm opening up the door. <laughs> but they were, they were hungry. But watch this, watch this. There's something, there's something, Marcel, that's on the inside of us that triggers us to let us know when we're hungry. That's right. Isn't it so? Yes. So if we have something inside of us that triggers us when our physical man is hungry, we ought to have something in our spirit man that triggers us to say this that way. I'm so hungry for your word, God. Yes, yes, yes. 
Don't go another place. I got to get to the word of God. Why? Because I'm hungry. I'm going through some things in my life that I listen, I got to get fed the word of God because the word is the only thing that's going to help me make it through what I'm going through. I can make it, but I need the word. We're so, and I, I'm, listen, I done lost all that weight. I done gained home, some of that weight back. <laughs> That's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. But watch this, if I'm so, I'm just, I'm just talking to me right now. If I'm so concerned about my physical health, which I am, and all of us should be, this should be likewise the same way that we ought to take concern of our spiritual health. Mm -hmm. Amen. If we know, can I talk to y'all for a minute? Mm -hmm. If we know, where'd George go? If we know, uh, okay, since George ain't here, I'll pick on Deacon Pharrell. So if he knows that his uh, blood sugar level will go up, if he continues to eat a whole bunch of sweets, wouldn't you think, <laughs> wouldn't you think he would stop eating or cut out some of the sweets? Because he know in all probability, if he don't cut it out, then he could, we're not saying it, but he could go into a diabetic seizure or coma, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. If you know that you need to stop doing certain things, yes. why don't we do it? You can get through it, but you're going to have to make, oh, I, this ain't part of my notes. You're going to have to make some adjustments. Amen. All right. Amen. Yes, there's not, no temptation, no test is common to man. But understand, beloved, you got to make some adjustments in your life. Now, right now, I can't do too much because my back is sore. So that's a real good excuse, ain't it? Mm -hmm. So you think. Mm -hmm. Isn't it something? Hey, then how we come up with all kinds of excuses to not read the word of God. All right. But we won't come up with no excuses why we can't put something in our mouths. Mm -hmm. That's right. Help me somebody. Jake. Some of y'all right now, I'm talking about food. Y'all talking about, ooh, what are we eating? <laughs> look at it, look at it. She, she woke up. I just looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Huh? You and I can make it. But the first thing we got to do, first of all, beloved, we got to understand we need the word of God. We need the word of God in our lives. Amen? Amen. We, we need the word of God. We need, we need his word. There's no temptation that's common except for such as common unto man. So the second truth, the second truth I want to give you, uh, I'm trying to get through this thing. The second truth I want you to understand that you must embrace is you got to understand that God Amen. is faithful. God is faithful. I don't know if we sang this song yet, uh, uh, Andrew, but Hezekiah Walker, y'all know the song, wrote the song. Huh? Faithful. Faithful. Faithful, yes. faithful is our God. It says, I'm reaping the harvest God promised me, yes. taking back what the devil stole from me. And I rejoice today, for I shall what recover it all. He's faithful. Any test can be resisted because God will help you to resist it. All right? You got to understand that no Christian could ever deny God's faithfulness to him. Amen. Because the Bible says, watch this, make no mistake about it, in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 13, the word of God says, if we are faithless, he remains what? Faithful. He cannot deny himself. God's very character, brothers and sisters, is at stake. God will always remain faithful to us no matter what we're going through. He will always remain faithful to us. I don't care what you may have done. He will always remain faithful to you. Look at the children of Israel. Disobedient, hard-headed folk, but yet and still he remained faithful to them. Look at David. Yeah. David, watch this, David had a man killed because he was digging on that man's wife. But what? God still remained faithful. Oh, yes, amen. Amen. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Look at Peter. Peter denied Jesus three times, but yet still God what? Remained faithful. Hallelujah. 
Yes, sir. Mm. He will always remain faithful. So don't you dare think that God won't remain faithful to you. He will remain faithful. So there's no temptation that will overtake you that is common to man. God is faithful. And the third, third truth I want you to understand, he will not let you be tempted beyond what you are able. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we, we read the story about how it was the Apostle Paul it says that he had a thorn in his flesh. And he sought the Lord. He continued to ask God to remove it, to remove it, to remove it. Get this thorn. It, it, it's bothering him. And we don't know. Theologians don't know what it is that was, that was bothering him. We don't know his physical condition. But obviously it was bothering him so. So he said, to, Look, Lord, please do something about this. Do something about this. And, and God said, he, he, just, he just plainly told him, he said, listen, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is all that you need. Amen. He says, and my power works best in weakness. Now, so, so Paul said, now, so now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. Beloved, whatever you're facing right now, God's grace it's sufficient for you. Amen. And it, listen, it may feel like it's impossible, but on the basis of God's character, and his character, man, whoo, anybody know about the character of God? That he's always been there? Yes, sir. I, don't, I don't know about y'all, but whoosh, he's a, Isaiah, when we went through a flood, he was still right there. Yeah. Hallelujah. We, we've gone through things in our lives, in our family's lives, I'm just talking about my family, but God had remained what? Faithful. Amen. He's still right there. His, his, strength, his strength has been made perfect in our weaknesses. Amen. We can overcome anything that we're faced with Thank you. if we just rely on God's grace. Amen. So there's no temptation that will overtake you that is common to man. God is faithful. He will not let you to be tempted beyond what you're able. The fourth thing I want you to see, but with the temptation, I like this one, will also make the way of escape. Understand something, beloved. There's some times that you're going to have to run when you know wrong is nearby. You're going to have to, you're going to have to, you're going to have to, can I, let me give you the scripture. Because running from temptation, tempting situations is your first step on the way to your victory. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, from the New Living Translation, look at the first word that says, that, that Paul says to his son Timothy, he said, run. From anything that stimulates youthful lust, instead pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure heart. Understand something, beloved. Running away is sometimes considered cowardly. But wise people realize that removing themselves physically from temptation is often the best courageous action that they can take. Amen. There's nothing, listen, listen. Oh my God. Jordan, ain't nothing wrong with running. Ain't nothing wrong with running. Nothing, when you got temptation coming at you, run, Forrest, run! <laughs> Y'all remember that movie? Everybody done seen Forrest Gump at least once in their life. Amen. And when them boys was beating up Forrest, and Jenny didn't want to see Forrest get beat up. All Jenny could tell him, run, Forrest! <laughs> you need to, ooh, can, can I say this? Watch this, Andrew, you need to have some Jennies in your life that's going to tell you to run! Amen. Don't stand there and try to fight, run! Amen. Okay, y'all don't believe me? Look at scripture. Come here, Joseph. All right. Joseph was in power of his house, y'all remember? Amen. Uh, we talked about, and, and power of his wife, had an eye for Joseph. Yeah. Yeah, Mrs. Potiphar, she was, she was some kind of lady. Wasn't she? I wanted to say another word, but she was some kind of lady. Yeah, yeah, she was. Y'all got names for, I don't want to call them names, but she was some kind of lady, if I can call her a lady. She waited till her husband left. Mm. Got to watch them kind. Mm. She wasn't trying to do nothing while her husband was around, because she, you know, Brother Potiphar probably would have put a knot upside her head. <laughs> But she waited to Potiphar with God. Y'all read the story. And she came on to Joseph. Mm -hmm. Come here, Joseph. Mm -hmm. What's your fine self? <laughs> Come here. I got something for you, Joseph. Joseph said, no, you ain't got nothing for me. Yeah, right. 
<laughs> what you got belong to Potiphar. Mm -hmm. That ain't none of mine. Get on somewhere. She kept trying. She kept, don't you know and understand? Watch this. Because the devil ain't going to stop one time. Right. He's going to try to get you the best way he can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all read this story. She came on to Joseph so much. So listen, come on, come on, come on. Oh, man, I got children up in here. I got to watch myself. I want you to have some of this good, good. He says, and I paraphrase it, he says, I can't do that. Because first of all, Potiphar has been good to me. But most of all, I serve God. And the God I serve, my conscience won't allow me to do that thing. I'm just paraphrasing this for you. Mm -hmm. So he said, listen, no, go ahead on about your business. Mm -hmm. And when the devil really want to grab hold of you, he's going to try to do whatever he can. Oh. And then, come here, come here, come here real quick. Un unbutton, unbutton that thing, unbutton that thing. C come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Turn around. So, so, so Joseph done told her, grab, it, grab hold of this right here, grab hold of this Joseph done told her, she coming at you, boy. She coming at you with all she got. You better get up out of there. Amen. Joseph ran. Yeah. Ain't no harm in running. Now you said, well, pastor, that ain't the end of the story. You know what? It ain't. Because she lied on him. Mm -hmm. He ended up serving time in jail for the lie. But nonetheless, he lived to see another day. Because had he had fulfilled, if watch it, had he had gone with this anything lustful, right? He probably would have been dead. He, we probably would have never heard no more about Joseph. But Joseph said, "No, I'm going to live for God." That's right. And I listen when the temptation comes. See, y'all looking at me like y'all ain't never been tempted with nothing. And see, can I say this? See, it ain't just about a sexual thing either. That's it. There's some things in your life that the enemy knows if he can just dangle it in front of you. If he can just dangle this in front of you. Some, some of us got some, some, some vices. Talk to me, somebody. It may, not, it, may not be, it may not be something sexual. It may be, you, you might, you, you still haven't got no alcohol. And yet still you hang around, folk. Come on, just one shot. Just one shot. Some of you still dealing with drugs. Come on, just one hit, just one hit. It's going to be all right. Matter of fact, I'll roll it up for you. You gotta say run, just run. Yep. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, neighbor. Run! 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 Run, there's no, hey listen. You ain't, Some, somebody, oh Lord Jesus, somebody needs to hear this today. Run, whatever it is, that, because if it's not in God's will, if it's not in God's word, you don't need to be around it. So get away from it. Run from it. All right? And if you have, listen, if you have recurring temptations that you find difficult to resist, then remove your physical self from that situation that stimulates your desires to sin. Get away from it. Get away from it. Get away. Okay, can, can I show you something? Oh, man, I'm trying to, man. Okay. The word of God, there's nothing wrong. Watch this. Watch this, Andrew. There's nothing wrong with us having money. God desires for us to be rich. All right. But the word of God says what? The love yeah. of money, of money mm -hmm. Amen. is the root of all evil. Amen. What are you doing to get the money that you have? Mm -hmm. That can be a sin. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Nothing wrong with men. I mean, my man riding around the Escalades. We got, we got, we got Mercedes. We got Cadillacs around here. Ain't nothing wrong with it. We living in good houses. We got swimming pools. I say we. We got swimming pools to swim in. Huh? Because listen, rejoice with those that do rejoice. Swim with those that do swim. <laughs> but understand, beloved. Whatever it is that you, and you know, you know what the enemy is tempting you with. Whatever it is that's keeping you from God, maybe your job, maybe a boyfriend, maybe a girlfriend, maybe, you know, whatever it is. Maybe, watch this, maybe, watch this, 
may be shopping too much. Woo. How is that possible, Pastor? Yeah, because the reason why you can't pay your tithe or give your tithe and your offering is because you don't spent all your money at the store for stuff that you don't need. How many of us in here right now got stuff in our closet that we know we can't wear and we ain't probably never going to wear and we still going out buying stuff? Amen. <laughs> we haven't even, some of you got stuff with tags still on the, on, on the stuff <laughs> and you still going out to buy it. And then when it comes time to give it a love offering in the house of God, you can't give it because you done gave it to Macy's. You done gave it to whoever you, wherever you done shop that. I don't shop at Macy's Pass. I start shopping at Marshall's and Ross. So, <laughs> <laughs> run from it, guys. Run, run, run. I'm, I'm going to give you this last point. Last point. Last point. Understand that God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able to endure. He will strengthen you and guide you through the difficult times. And Apostle Paul assures you, if you follow God's path, here's the final thing, that you will be able to endure it. Although God can, he does not always remove a test from your life. But what, what he does do, he gives you the strength. He provides for you sufficient grace to endure and to stand up under the test. So here it is again, beloved. When you and I experience tests in our lives, don't say that you can't handle it. You're going through something that you can't handle. Yes, you can. I just told you here that you can handle it. There's no test that comes your way that you and I can't handle it if we just follow the guidelines that we just laid out here before you today. Stay in your word. Stay in your word. Amen. Don't, 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 don't. There used to be a time when uh, you, you would see people's Bibles um, in, in the, the back of their car, in the windshield of the car. What good is that doing? when you're sitting there? Now they put them on dashboards. Now, you know, now we, we, we you know, we fast forward. We got it on our, on our phones. Stay in your word. Just as much as we like to eat physical food, have that same desire, or even more so, to study God's word. Because I guarantee you, each and every one of us, ain't none of us in here, ain't none of us in here too old or too young to go through a test. And all of us have gone through them in one way or another, whether it be physical, emotional, spiritual, we've all gone through them. But we're here, why? Because we have endured the test. And as long as we're living, Mother Grant, we're going to keep on having tests. The Lord is continuously strengthening us. And I don't know about you, I want to be strengthened. I do. I want to be strengthened. And not only that, because it helps me, Andrew, watch this, because there's going to be somebody that's going to go through the same test that I'm going through or have gone through. You've gone through some things. But now that you've gone through it, somebody going to come up and you're going to say, you know what, bro, I went through the same thing. But can I tell you how I went through it? Because some people go through stuff and they don't understand how they're going to make it. But when they come to you, they're coming to you for a reason. Because God has sent them to you. Amen. To share your experiences with them. Say, hey. And you know what? You, we need to talk to people like real talk. Amen. You understand what I said about real talk? I ain't talking about churchy talk. Right. Well, let me tell you what the Lord has now. Sit down and talk. Hey, let me holler at you for a minute, buddy. I understand what you're dealing with. But let me give you the real 411 on this thing. I know they don't say 411. I know that's kind of outdated, but let me be, okay, let me be 100. That good? Let, the T. The T. Let me give you the T. Oh, look, sipping the T. So, see, 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 that's what I'm saying. So, when you have people your age that you can talk to, let me give you the tea. So they don't understand, because I'm like, tea? What's the tea? <laughs> S comes after T, U, V, W, X, Y. What's the tea? But we, he will allow you to share. You've gone through some experiences. You're going through some experiences. Maybe that's one of us in here going through some experiences. 
that by the grace of God, you're still here. Amen. You're still here. You have not gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Why? Because God has given you the grace to endure it. Everybody's standing.